Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to everyone both here and at home on this 12th week of Trinity. Please be seated. You may or may not know that today is the commemoration of Birinus, the Bishop of Dor Dorchester, uh, Apostle of Wessex, who was the first Bishop of Dorchester and was known as the Apostle to the West Saxons for his conversion of the Kingdom of Wessex to Christianity. There's a little bit of snippets for you. <laughs> now for the um, notices, we have, of course, our fun day. I've got to plug that for you. Um, and especially with our Teddy zip wire. And I believe, Judith, are we getting live music? Is it in hand? Um, we've got, hopefully. Hopefully. Little lady band are on standby. Okay, so that could be, you know, if that comes off, that'd be very exciting for everyone. The other exciting bit of news is film nights are back. Now, we don't know what the first film's going to be, but it will be um, on Friday, the 30th of September, and it will be at 7.30. So I hope as many of you can make that as possible. So it's great that that's Jean, back. I'm just what they are. Martin's looking confused. We'll keep you in the... Oh, sorry, for those that don't know... <laughs> I do apologise, Martin. When we have film night, everybody comes here and you can bring your blankets, your cushions, and we have, um, are we doing it, Paul, your famous uh, pie? So he does his hot pot, and then sometimes somebody does a pudding, and there's wine, and it's all included in the price. And what is the price, Paul, this year? Ten pounds. There you go cheap isn't it when you think you get a film and all that as well included so please do come along it's a great fun thing to do um so i think that's the notice unless anybody's got anything else that i have got oh yes liz all right with well, the fun day so we have the, we have got the teddy zip wire and if you haven't got a teddy you can actually put a donation and get a teddy is it five pound you, you, you can do it go on i'll get, get it be easier okay. Wire going from the church tower right into the middle of the field so the teddies teddies not children the teddies will go down the, the zip wire if you get a teddy the teddies are five pounds each but you adopt the teddy the teddies are quite big you adopt the teddy at the bottom but you've got to think of a name before it comes down the zip wire um and you get an adoption certificate if you want your own teddy to go down the zip wire we're going to haul your teddy up the tower and send him down the zip wire and then he'll get a bravery award so that's a little cheaper. I can't remember how much it is now. So there you go. So that's the zip wire. On top of that, all the games are going to be on the field, a bit like we had last year, but with extra things. Paul is going to do a toss the sponge at the vicar, you know, just so he's warned. Yeah, you are. And uh, <laughs> and there's various other things. Splat the rats and connect with all the rest of it. It's all free. So basically, if you come into the day, it's free. All those games are free. The only thing there's a charge for is the zip wire because of the cost of the teddies and face painting. We're just going to paint teddy bears. So everybody's got to be painted as a teddy bear. Um, and they, we're sitting a bit at the side for a teddy bear's picnic. So before it starts, teddy bear's picnic. And there are stalls on the car park. Um, and any bric-a-brac that people want to bring, books, clothes, anything that they want to put on the bric-a-brac stalls, Linda is organising that. I'm looking around because she was going to announce it herself, but she's not here, so there we go. Linda's going to do that. So if people want to bring bric-a-brac, um, Linda says she'll organise where to collect that. So if you start gathering next week, we can ask her where she wants to go. Help us gratefully received. We do need people to man all the games because the kids get tokens, all this bit's free, and if they get eight tokens by playing at least four games, they get a prize, so they get free prizes too. So it's to really get the village children mixing and to get everybody to have a bit of fun for the day. So get your teddies ready. It's 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 all uh, it's all on go. And the ukulele band will be in the hall. Liz, right? It's the twenty fourth of September. One o'clock, we're opening up for the teddy bears for the stand and for the face painting, so we can all become teddies before two o'clock. Two till four are the games and the zip wire. We'll start at two o'clock too. We just need to make sure it's obviously there. Okay. Sorry? Yes, the um, ladies, Sue is in charge of sorting some food. Sue's at the back there. Uh, with the ladies, with, with all the men, and some of you I'm sure are good cooks, um, we're just going to do cakes and scones because people are being encouraged to have their own picnics. So we thought if we did sweet things because it's easier for us to organise. So there'll be drinks and cakes and scones in the school hall with the ukulele band. 
There you are. That's a little bit for you. Um, in the school hall as well. There's various games in there too. So on the whole, what we're really saying is if you want to come for a free day, that's fine. But there are things to do if people do bring some money with them. And we'll just take donations, which is what we did last year. So if people want to donate to help us pay for it, great. If they can't afford, equally great. We just want to village people to come. Is that all right? Thank you. Sorry? Sorry? <laughs> I'm good at that one, actually, Jonathan, so I won't do it now. Thank you, Judy. Now, oh, sorry, no, yes, Paul. This, this is a free for all. <laughs> it is, well, carry on. Uh, at the Bible Club exercise last uh, Sunday it begins a week on Tuesday um, at uh, Jonathan Sam's series of videos, a uh, discussion um, all about the Bible uh, and the story of the Bible. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be good. Uh, if you would like to come, it will be useful to have um, one of these course books. Um, they're actually £4.50. I didn't say that last week. £4.50 is the whole thing. Um, if you have a problem with that, let me know. And, uh, I'll raise some support. Uh, some um, but uh, if you would like one, uh, let me know. Well, I can actually vouch because you've got a line on there, haven't you, on the front of that page of that book. Mm, yeah. I went on part of a course and we had a crash course of the Bible in three hours and we used that line. And it's amazing also how it actually gets you to focus on parts of the Bible. So, you know, please do consider that because it was really, really good to do. On to church services. Um, today, this evening's evening prayer is at 6.30. Uh, next week is the 13th week after Trinity, and it will be morning prayer at 11 o'clock, and at 6.30pm will be Holy Communion. We'll now have our opening prayer. Lord, the resurrection of your Son has given us new life and renewed hope. Help us to live as new people in pursuit of the Christian ideal. Grant us wisdom to know what we must do the will to want to do it, the courage to undertake it, the perseverance to continue to do it, and the strength to complete it. Amen. We will now stand to sing our hymn, 162, From Heaven You Came, Helpless Babe.
will remain standing for our confession. And we'll all use, use the words that are on the screen. Lord Jesus, thank you for your presence with us today, for your love and your forgiveness. As we come before you this morning, we are sorry for the wrong things we have done and for the good things we have not done. Please help us to show our love for you in all we think and say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today, almighty and everlasting God, who art always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and art want to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of thy mercy, forgiving us those things whereof our conscience is afraid, and giving us good things which we are not worthy to ask. But through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will actually now sing another hymn. That's why you've remained standing. And it will be 619 Such Love. Please be seated. As you might feel this morning, you're doing a bit of exercise with all this standing and sitting. Um, uh, it's just the way that we've sort of tried to put things together for this morning. Um, but if you do feel you need to sit down, please do. Now, words from scripture. It's Genesis um, 12, verses 1 to 9, and it will be read by... Oh, it's not Melanie this morning. It's going to be... That threw me. Is it going to? Which one of you is going to do it? Go on, go on, Andy. <laughs> so this morning's reading is from the book of Genesis, uh, from chapter twelve, beginning to read at verse one. If you wish to follow us in the Bibles and the pews, it is on page thirteen. The Lord has said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth 
will be blessed through you. So Abraham left, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, and nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he went on towards the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abraham set out and continued towards the Negev. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you like to uh, yeah, dump? Down more. Paul, let me do that, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's lovely to be here this morning, um, so I'll just pray before I start. Heavenly, thought, Heavenly Lord, let our words, our thoughts, our hearts be with you. Let my words be yours this morning and not my own. Amen. Amen. So this morning, we're going to build on what Paul has fabulously taught us over the past few weeks about prayer. He's looking scared now. Um, we're going to look at how it fits into our relationship with God. Well, how, how does this actually work when we're wanting to follow God's will? But before we do that, we're going to have a bit of a quiz. If you'd like to join in at home, then please feel free to put on the chat your answers to the questions. And Paul is going to tell me when he's got some answers. Yes, he's nodding, great. <laughs> or if you're here, put your hand up or shout out, whatever. Okay, so the first slide. The question is, name that film and name the character. No, oh, nearly, yeah. nearly. Finding Nemo. Yes, Finding Nemo. And the character? No. Anyone? Who said? I'll give you that. Marlin. Excellent. Marlin. Brilliant. So, has anybody seen this film? Yeah. Marvellous. That makes my job so much easier. Okay. Marlin sees his son taken just off the reef. He's swimming up to the boat. And then someone goes in with a net and grabs him. And Marlon sees his son, his only little boy, taken. What does he do next? Sorry? Follows the boat. Follows the boat. Barbara's got it. He moves, he goes, he acts straight away. And Marlin is one of the scaredy catist English, little fishes you would ever imagine. He is nervous about everything. He's totally overprotective of his son. He lives in this plant, he hides away. His son gets taken, he's off. He is not pausing for anything. He doesn't get a meeting together on the reef and go, oh, what should we do, my boy is gone. No. He's off, swimming, swim, 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 swim. And he has a great time along the way, he meets Dory, they find his son, just the job. Next slide. I'm sorry about the quality of this picture. It's not the best picture in the world. Can anybody get the film or the characters in it? Is it? It, she does play Hermione, but that's not this film. Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast, yeah. And the characters? Belle. Belle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, excellent, excellent job on Zoom. Well done. Um, 
So here is Emma Watson and Kevin Klein, which you knew, obviously. Um, Belle's father goes off to sell a clock thing that he's made. And Belle's there singing and feeding the chickens like you do. And the horse comes running back empty. And she's like, oh no, my father, what's happening? What does she do? Looks fine. Yeah, does she do anything first? Does she hang about? Does she Jump go on the and... horse? Sorry? Jump on the horse? Jumps on the horse and... Zoom, she goes. Anything else? Fabulous. You know your films, guys. Right, next slide. Ooh, some shaking of heads. Ooh. It's what, John? Yes, okay. Excellent. And the question is, when Mr. Incredible goes off and gets himself in trouble and his suit sends out a distress call, what does his wife, Elastigirl, do? <laughs> Runs after him? Runs after him? Yeah? Yeah? Stretches out. <laughs> Yeah, she does do a lot of stretching in the film, to be fair. Anything else? Nothing on, on the chat. Well, yes, she goes. She gets her act together and she's off, sorts the kids, borrows an aeroplane like you do, and goes. I am saving my husband, she says. I'm off. And she does. And she is amazing. She is amazing. Now, because I haven't preached for a while, I thought I had to throw in one of these. Next one. Of course, you all know this film. Star Trek, yes. Yes. Name the Star Trek film. No. <gasps> oh. oh. And I thought you were my friend, really. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. So, I'm sorry. This is the film Star Trek Insurrection. And um, the cast, the, the crew of the Enterprise, Mr. Data, one of their crew, who is an android, gets um, uh, into trouble. And the people that are looking after him decide that he's gone wrong and he needs to be switched off. So they ask the crew of the Enterprise for his codes. And the Enterprise, led by Captain Picard, goes, Ooh, what do you think he does? Go on. What do you think? With the theme running through the slides, what do you think he might he do? He to help him. Sorry? He rushes off to help him. He rushes off to help him. He does. He sorts out what he's doing at this, at this fancy <laughs> dinner, and then he goes, goes with his crew, finds Mr. Data, sorts it out, because Mr. Data is his friend. Excellent. Okay, so, leaving fictional people behind, let's look at some pictures from the people in the history of our faith, some people in the Bible. Okay. So, yeah. burning bush, and the chap stood there with his stick. Moses. Yeah? Any other? Any other? No? Moses, all agreed? Yes, absolutely. This is Moses. God says, so now go. I immediately want to say, walk out the door. But no, God says, so go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses says to God, really? Me? Who am I that I can go to Pharaoh? Bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Oh, don't think so. And God says, I will be with you. And God is with him all the time, every step of the way. He gives, it, he gives him an amazing, crazy stick that does incredible things with the power of God. And he gives him people to help him. He gives him his brother and lots of other people that can help him with the speaking and the difficult bits. But he listens to Moses. 
and he gives him the help he needs. So Moses listens. He does a bit of talking to God, a bit of prayer, we might call it, and then he acts straight away. Okay, next one. This one's a little bit more difficult. It's a bit of a strange picture. Can you guess in the Bible what is happening here? No. Um, not quite. Oh, Anne? Huh? Sending the disciples out. The phrase that is quite well known is, I think the word, the first word of it is, oh, the vicar's got it. Well, he knows his Bible. Yes. So go and make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. And they do. They go. And Mary, Peter, amazing people, build incredible churches throughout the land. When Jesus has said, go. I can't remember which way he's facing. It might be that way. Go, he says. So, next one. After today's reading, it's a bit of a strange picture, this one, but I'm possibly painted by someone called Jacopo Bassono. Maybe. Okay. Abraham, as you might have guessed, often talked about as a nomad, but he wasn't a nomad. He travels in the Bible because God sends him. But he was a city boy, man, man, city man. He was a city guy with his family, his nephews, his wider family. He liked the city life. He didn't generally live in tents, but he went. He knows that the promises of God won't all come true in his lifetime. He's not even sure if he believes them all about having a great family because he's really old, so he's not sure about that one. But he goes, and yes, he makes mistakes along the way, like we all do. But in this instance, Abraham went. And the more he trusts God, the closer they get. The more God trusts him and their conversations, their prayers get more intimate and... This is like everybody's journey, isn't it? The more God gives us, trusts us with, the more we do it, the more he trusts us with, the more we do it, and it builds a relationship like any of our relationships. Right, so there's a couple here I don't have pictures for. I apologise. Noah, in Genesis 6, I will establish my covenant with you, you and your sons, your wife, your son's wives, you are to bring into the ark, two of all living creatures. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten, store it away. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. I mean, wow. He thinks God's telling him he's going to wipe out the whole planet and that he has to build an enormous boat. And he goes, okay. That is amazing. It really is. Matthew 10, Jesus sends out the 12. Do not worry about what you're going to say and how you say it. I will give you what to say. You will not be speaking. The spirit of the father will be speaking through you. And so you get the theme. Yeah. Okay, good. So we know what we're supposed to do. If God calls us to do something, we act. We can pause, not for dramatic effect, but for prayer. We can ask for clarification. We can say to God, really, what, me? <laughs> wobble, wobble, yeah? Or we can say, how do I do that? Who do I need to talk to? And God will give us the magic crazy stick or the people to help us, okay? Amazing that God really takes care of the details. So, the praying. Paul spoke to us last week about how we get messages from God. And he told us about maybe a voice in our head. I've never had that. I had a friend who used to get pictures in his head. That's amazing. How does that work? That's incredible. God is incredible, isn't it? Some people get messages through the Bible, through their friends, through their Christian friends, people at church, all sorts of different ways. Yeah, out of the mouths of babes, we hear it constantly, don't we? We do. And bring it on. Absolutely. We don't have to worry about being up to the challenge because Jesus said, I am with you always. 
and at that time you will be given what to say, which is a good job because preaching wasn't my first choice as a career. He gives us what to say. Our journey with God may not be as big as Abraham's or Abraham's, but it might be. How will we know unless we listen, pause for prayer if we must, and act? Sometimes we're going to mess it up. A lot sometimes. But all these people in the Bible, a lot of the people, not all the people, many of the people in the Bible are ordinary people, young people. There's young lads in the Bible, young women, old women, older gentlemen, all kinds of people in the Bible, ordinary people who God gives jobs to. And they run with it and they act. And sometimes they ask, sometimes they pause and go, what, really, me? How? When? Where? But they do it. They listened. They trusted. Sometimes they paused. And then they acted. Listen. Pause for prayer. Act. That's how we do it. That's what the Bible tells us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we have each other to encourage each other to tell us things we need to know. Thank you for your scripture. Thank you that you can reach all of us in different ways because we're all so very different and we listen in different ways. Show us how to listen to you because we want to do your will, Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> yeah, choir, if you'd like to take your seats again. <laughs> no rest around it. <laughs> And we will now stand for our next hymn, number five, Above the Voices of the World Around Me. And we will remain standing afterwards for our affirmation of faith. And the words will be up on the screen and you say what's in bold.
as I said, the words in bold, if you join in with those. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we start our prayers, I'd just like to thank Angie for her talk. Um, I thought it was a great fun session. Thank you. Really sort of a setting about prayer, which now leads into the next session of prayers. And what I want you to do before you sit down, I want you to be aware of all the people around you. And I want you to also, th when you're looking at them, think of the power of prayer of all of you here and all of you at home. Wave to everybody, acknowledge we're here. <laughs> okay. Now, and choir, can you wave to the people because if they can't see the hours, wave to everybody who's at home. I now like, like you to turn to the person next to you or behind you, you can do however many you like, and I would like you to offer the sign of peace. <laughs> Can you speak with you? Okay. Now we've acknowledged everybody in this room. Just think of the power of prayer that we have in this room, the power of prayer that we have at home for those watching us. So with that power of prayer, we will now be seated and have our intercessions. Lord God, we bring to you all the members of our church family today, both here and at home, and thank you for this place of worship. You know us all so well and love us all equally. Thank you for the love that unites us all, the peace we enjoy today and the hopes that we have for tomorrow. God of love, yeah. hear our prayer. Hope is like a banner that runs in our lives and watches over us wherever we go. It helps us gather our strength to overcome any adversity that we may have to deal with in our lives. Make us aware of those individuals who need our help, especially when we have busy lives and think it's not our problem. Help us always to be kind and considerate to family, friends, and even strangers, especially in their time of need. God of love, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, you gently guide us and help give us vision for our futures, whether alone or together. So please be patient with us when we think things are out of control, or maybe taking the wrong direction. Prompt us to do the right thing and listen. Listen to your words. We will now just spend a few moments in quiet prayer, offering up our problems that are causing us concern. God of love, hear our prayer. Hope filled with love fuels our faith. Hope breathes peace. We know there are many areas torn apart because of wars, floods, famine, poor health, and more going on in our world. 
and people must feel there is no end in sight to their suffering. Lord, please send our prayers of hope around the world to all who need them. God of love, Amen. hear our prayer. Lord, we face uncertain times politically as we move forward with the change of Prime Minister. We pray that they and other party leaders work together and negotiate for the better good of everyone within our communities and all the nations around the world. God of love, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we now pray for those who are in poor health and need our healing prayers. We'll take a few moments silence to pray for those close to our hearts. <laughs> Merciful Father, we now remember the souls of your servants now fallen asleep and those saddened by their passing. We also pray for the bereaved in their loneliness. Again, take a few moments of silence to think about those close to your hearts. O oh, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll now say the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And I hope now that the Lord has heard our prayers. We will now stand for our next hymn, which is the Offertory Hymn, number 181 god forgive my sins in jesus sorry god forgave my sin in jesus name
gracious God, accept these gifts and with them our lives to be used in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sharon, for leading us this morning in worship. Um, are we having a cup of tea afterwards? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Fabulous. Do join for cups of tea. So let's pray to God before we go. Amazing God, sometimes we forget to pray, but we want to learn and follow your way. Teach us to listen, pray and act, knowing that you always have our back. Stay close to us and all we love, keeping us safe around and above. Trusting in your loving grace until the day we see your face. Hold us in your gentle hands, so strong and mighty, our future now planned. Amen. Amen. Amen.